Hi everyone, rain is expected for Southern California. Finally, after a dry month of December, you can see over my shoulder here is one of the latest predictions of the rainfall. Looks like it could be significant for Southern California. So let's go over some of the details here for the upcoming rain Tuesday afternoon through Friday. This is a summary and the highlights. Right now it looks like the main storm, it's a slow moving storm, is targeting the LA basin area with part of the storm moving down into San Diego. Now we could see rain as early as Tuesday afternoon, but the majority of the rain looks like it'll come into our region here in Southern California on Thursday and Thursday night. Here's some of the totals predicted here. Okay, uh, who will see the most? It looks like the San Gabriel Mountain foothills will see the most, but our coastal areas will see widespread one to three inches. Coast areas widespread one to three inches. And even our desert areas could see over an inch of rain majority of this on Thursday. Now this starts off as a fairly warm storm, so snow levels are up around 7,500, 8,000 feet. So that's above most of the mountain passes except for Onyx Peak. Now it does come down. Uh, so the San Gabriel Mountains could end up falling into some very heavy wet snow at and above 7,000 feet. This storm will have some wind too. So we look for wind to impact our region uh, starting on Wednesday uh, and continuing to Wednesday night, a south wind. Some of the rainfall rates could be quite heavy during the peak of the storm on Thursday. So keep that in mind. There's a real threat for urban flooding. Additional storms for next week? Yes, uh, but it looks like the track is a little further north. So we get clipped rather than getting a direct hit from these storms. So central Northern California looks like the best uh, excessive rainfall potential for next week, holiday week. Okay, it's been really dry. We haven't seen any rainfall since November 30th. As you can see, the start of the water year, October 1, the red shade here, uh, all those areas are about 50% or less. Some areas a quarter, 25% of their rainfall so far. It's been dry. Now, we're gonna make up for this uh, quickly. Uh, statewide, this is the projection for rainfall. And you can see right off the bat here that coastal areas and the Sierra Nevada, similar amounts because of the track of the storm along the coast. It's not your typical storm. Uh, and that also means parts of Southern California really getting hit hard potentially like the LA basin. This is a zoomed up version. And you can see again, LA basin getting uh, almost double what we get in San Diego, but still heavy rainfall totals along the coast. The rain begins Tuesday afternoon. In earnest, the heaviest rain looks to be Thursday and Thursday night. Because of the southerly wind and the track of the storm, uh, there's less drying out in the deserts as well. The first part of the storm, again, it's targeting Ventura, LA County, the first part, uh, but there will be showers and some thunderstorms impacting our region which is Western Riverside, Western San Bernardino, and San Diego County. Storm two, or the main part of the storm, comes in on Thursday and Thursday night. That's when we really expect to see the bigger rainfall totals and the heavier rainfall rates. Uh, all areas along the coast, again, one to three inches of rain. I did talk about the St. Gabriel's being wettest area, and that is what's shown here and also about the deserts having significant spillover. Uh, that's widespread rain of over an inch for all of our deserts that could cause some mud and flooding problems out there too. Urban areas, you look to get the hardest hit with this rain. And the excessive rainfall outlook says that. Uh, all the way from Santa Barbara through Ventura, LA, and of course Orange County, Northern San Diego County, the yellow shaded, that's not the only place it's going to rain, but that's where it's going to rain the hardest with the biggest totals. Uh, the green shaded means there's still a threat, which includes the deserts, but it's less a threat. Also, we'll see, even though a lot of the moisture and rain will get absorbed in the soil, we'll start seeing some runoff in our streams and rivers. This is the San Diego River shown. You can get the latest information on our webpage. Now I wanted to show this because it's important for snow prediction. Storm's not coming from the north or from the Great Basin, it's coming from the west. So that means uh, for the same elevation, colder air will be over the San Gabriel Mountains for a longer period of time. 
than it will be over, say, the San Jacinto Mountains to the east. That will affect uh, the really wet, heavy snow that accumulates around 7,000 feet and up. Initially, not a whole lot of snow because of the warmer air and the showers and thunderstorms. But when we get into Thursday and Friday, so Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, when the colder air sweeps in slowly from the west, uh, we'll start seeing that significant heavy wet snow piling up, uh, up around 7,000 feet and certainly above. Now this storm does have wind, so coastal communities, not only will you be dealing with heavy rainfall, especially Thursday, you'll also be dealing with some heavy winds. Winds picking up on Wednesday and continuing right into Thursday. So with those heavier showers, we could see along the immediate coast and urban areas, wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles per hour. That can cause some impact uh, to things that are not secured or even uh, down branches. Now, if you do see alerts in your area, these are the different levels. The flash flood warning is the most urgent. That could go to your phone as a wireless emergency alert message, okay? It also goes to your TV. The flood advisory means basically a travel advisory. Nuisance flooding, but roads could be dangerous, slow down. There'll be ponding of water and that type of thing, especially in low-lying or poor drainage areas. Before those two, uh, look for a flood watch, which gives you the best lead time that one of those two may happen that we may see excessive rainfall. Now, for those of you who want more detailed information and select your location specifically, uh, I encourage you to check out the weather.gov weather table as one source and you can decide the resolution every three hours, one hour, six hour, and also the type of view that you would like to have, a graph, a table, etc. Now, I also like this because it puts it all together as one, one-stop shopping, weather.gov forecast points. You pick your location. Now, why is this weather pattern so slow and why is the potential so high for rainfall along the immediate coast rather than the mountains per se? Uh, coming in from the west, it comes in on Wednesday, but then it really slows down in the California bite just offshore. So by Wednesday or Thursday, the L, the upper level storm system, makes very little progress. But we remain on the east side of it, the best lift for showers and thunderstorms. Now the actual center of the storm with some of the heaviest rainfall totals and rates comes in Thursday uh, into Friday morning. So it eventually starts to get kicked to the east and south, probably moving over San Diego and northern Mexico on Friday. So it's pretty much a direct hit, um, but it looks like it'll spend the longest duration and time over the California waters, pumping that moisture uh, into LA Basin area. Now, it does have a little bit of an atmospheric river to it. Uh, it's a small band. The key with this storm is the slow moving progression. So rain moving over the same area. Uh, that'll be the key with this storm. Not necessarily a giant strong atmospheric river, which it's not but it has plenty of moisture and it's a slow moving, uh, unstable storm. Now, uh, the jet stream is developing over the Pacific as we speak. Storm number one, that's our storm on Thursday uh, and Friday, okay? It's on the leading edge of the jet stream. So the jet stream is split, going to the north and going to the south. Now, a more consolidated jet stream looks to take over uh, next week, Christmas week. Uh, that looks like it'll target around 35 to 40 north so central northern California. So stay tuned if you've got plans up there or any interest in those areas. We'll get the southern part of those storms, but we won't get the straight direct hit. This is why the outlook looks like it does. The highest probability, not for rain, but for excessive above normal rain is the dark green area. That includes uh, areas from San Luis Obispo up to San Francisco and even the parts of the north coast. Now our area, like I said, gets the southern part of these storms, just not the direct hit. So the west coast during the holiday week and the east coast above normal active weather. We've been talking about this for a while. We are in an El Nino still along the equator that's above average, warmer than usual temperatures. And it's in the strong phase. It's been around since early summer, but you can see it started to peak out most recently. Now, uh, we can see it on weather satellite too. It stands out as very warm, 
unusually warm water along the equator that can affect our jet stream it doesn't bring the equator to us or even the moisture to us directly but it does affect our jet stream also notice on the west coast water is above normal that can help with the core of this storm on thursday with a little more energy and instability along the immediate coast We've already seen the atmosphere being affected by the warm El Nino conditions. And what I mean by that is the jet stream has been becoming stronger and more consolidated uh, in the central and northern Pacific as shown here, even before this first storm. So the path has already been set for an increasing elongated extended jet stream that looks like it'll fully develop uh, next week, especially for central northern California. Storm number one, though, for us is Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week.